The world of cryptocurrency rocked by the collapse of the giant FTX exchange last year was jolted again overnight when the Securities Exchange Commission issued a Wells notice against another major exchange, Binance. A Wells notice warns a company if it will be charged with violations of securities laws. Binance, in collaboration with Paxos, issued a US dollar stablecoin called BUSD. It tracks the US dollar and has a market value of 16 billion US dollars with 6.2 million holders around the world. The SEC says BUSD is an unregistered security. Paxos responded by saying it's prepared to vigorously litigate if necessary. Separately, the New York Department of Financial Services ordered Binance to stop issuing BUSD because it failed in its risk assessments to prevent bad actors from using the platform. So we checked here and sure enough, despite the warnings, you can buy BUSD from Binance's Australian platform right now. No problems at all. The corporate regulator ASIC today told us ASIC is monitoring developments in the US in relation to the BUSD stablecoin. ASIC will intervene in appropriate cases where we see the potential for harm to investors or broader market integrity. This may include crypto products and offerings which mimic traditional financial products and services. So let's bring in here Michael Bacina, a partner at law firm Piper Alderman, who specialises in digital assets and who's also the chairman of the industry group Blockchain Australia. Michael, many thanks for your time on the program today. I just want to go to this. You're working on regulations here in Australia with the government to, to try and prevent, if you like, the bad actors from really getting into these markets, aren't you? Look, that's right. There's certain risks that are posed by any new technology and there's certain benefits and we want to make sure we get the most of the benefits and minimise what risks we can. OK, tell me about the difficulties of that right now because quite clearly in the United States trying to work out what is a regulated security and what is not is difficult. Have they got the same difficulties here in Australia? Uh, there's a number of difficulties in the US which thankfully we don't have in Australia. In the US there's quite a fragmented securities regime. Each state has its own securities regulator and we've seen as well overnight the um, New York regulator issue a notice directing that the BUSD uh, stop being minted. They also have a federal regulator, the SEC. In Australia we're quite lucky to have a federated system and have our regulator ASIC looking at financial services and products. OK, so just explain how it is that BUSD can be regulated here in Australia but somehow appear to be unregulated in the United States. Does that mean that the, the security is any more or less safe regardless as to where it is? Oh, well, to be clear, I don't think we would describe BUSD as being regulated in Australia other than the anti-money laundering laws that would apply to an exchange which would offer BUSD um, to be converted into cash. Uh, there's definitely grey areas around cryptocurrencies. These are well known and the industry has been seeking sensible and pathway compliance for years and talking to the government. Unfortunately, the passage of laws and regulations takes years and there's lots of stakeholders to be consulted. There's certainly been a move in the United States towards what's known as uh, regulation by enforcement um, and increasingly voices coming out from the US asking why the SEC in particular has not been engaging to, find, to issue guidance and pathways to compliance. Part of what the Australian government is doing right now is working towards laws and licensing for digital asset businesses so that there will be a known pathway to have compliant products. That still has a number of matters to be settled. Uh, currently we have token mapping consultation underway and we're expecting to see draft legislation and consultation on digital exchange, licensing and importantly custody. One thing to remember with stable coins is that they are supposed to be stable because they have some kind of backing. Now we'll leave aside what's known as algorithmic stable coins. That was what you saw with the Lunar Terra collapse last Yes, I was, I was uh, going to talk to you about that, yes. In, in this case, yes. I was going to say that the, the Luna and That's Terra right. lost their peg to the US currency. That was their problem. They were never dollar-backed. So the Luna and Terra situation was what was known as an algorithmic stablecoin, which was attempting to retain a value of one US dollar by virtue of trading in the market, which is a very complicated um, thing, and it failed in that, in that instance. This stablecoin is supposed to be backed by one US dollar for each token which is being issued. And this is a space that's you know, obviously considered valuable. We've seen the ANZ and the NAB move in and say they're issuing their own um, 
bank digital currencies, which will be will be backed, and of course, coming out of a banking system, will come with a level of reputation and trust that's very different to something like the BUSD. So that being the case, can a person have confidence that they are going to a regulated market today if they are buying these stable coins? Um, I think the answer is it, it depends on the stable coin. The most popular stable coin is Tether, which is issued out of a um, small island nation and has very little to no regulation around it. Uh, the stablecoin USDC is issued by Circle as a registered investment in the US, which is a very different concept to what we have under Australian law. And I believe that the Paxos BUSD has a registration under New York law, but it's the federal regulator, the, S the SEC, which has come in asserting that there's been some kind of irregularities and a breach. So this is a very different scenario to um, perhaps other tokens that are sitting in a very unregulated space. Stable coins have been a hot topic for regulators probably for the last 12 months, thinking about various ways they could be regulated. Atero, Michael Puccini from Piper Alderman. Many thanks for your time. Great explanation. And we'll come back and have another conversation about this very, very shortly. Thanks so much for having me.